afternoon drinks at Saddler's Creek. We've got wonderful Wendy over here and boring Brett. I hope not. We're going to do some wine pairing because I'm a novice and I don't know too much about how you... Well, you can educate me, Brett. I reckon we can work that out. <laughs> Most important question, do you know how to drink wine? I do. Would you like to show me an example? Just hold the stem here, <coughs> last week's lesson. Oh, you were watching last week. Delicious. Put the finger away, not the queen. You can watch that thing. I want to be the did. queen. <laughs> That's what Scotty's. I love the Queen. All right, so Easter's coming up uh, as of tomorrow, excitingly, which is good. And we're going to be eating a number of different styles of foods over the long weekend. Um, probably everything from seafood uh, through to bunkered down, I don't know, two minute noodles, if that's what you've got in your cupboard. Chocolate. Probably pretty of chocolate as well, I would imagine. Um, so, how about we go through the next couple of days and food options and go from there. So tomorrow I'm having oysters and salmon and maybe some pasta with vongoli. Okay, cool. So seafood. So fresh seafood, prawns and oysters. Oysters. Wines. Excuse me, especially semion. So things like one or two year old sem, <laughs> Hunter Valley of course, is perfectly matched to this style of food. And the reason for that is the natural acidity in both the wine and the food. So oysters uh, and crabs and prawns and things like that, they're quite delicate but sharp in flavour, uh, much like things like semillon. So they match really well. If you want to go into things like salmon uh, or more on all the way through to aged sem, so something away from this to oily salmon, think old sem. Okay. 10, 20 years old, somewhere in the middle, get somewhere in the middle. Okay. Make sense? Beautiful. Perfect. Cool. So right. why doesn't semillon go with cheese? Why? Mm, you can drink anything you that. that you want with anything at the end of the day. If you like it, drink it. Okay. Who's to say uh, to do otherwise? At the end of the day, if you want to buy a bottle of wine, we're all for that. Okay. Um, but generally, things like cheeses, you tend to eat them at the end. Well, we do tend to eat them a lot at the end of the meal and they're quite uh, fatty. Um, and so they put a layer of fat over your tongue. By that stage, you've probably already had your seafood mm -hmm. and you've had protein um, as well as your main dish. So by that time, your palate is worn out. So delicate wines like this get lost. So something like a dessert wine or a big heavy red, they've still got enough muscle to keep your taste buds active. Okay. I would do a goat's cheese, a nice fresh goat's curd with the younger wines for that acidity balance. If you're having it as a, yeah. maybe at the start I of the meal? I suppose, yeah, for me, I never understood the acidity. I mm. never understood how that interacts with the food. And Sure, so think about lemons and limes. Yeah. They're real there you yeah. know they have that really sharp character it's the same thing that you see in these wines so heightened acidity um, will help cut through things like things this. like that yeah. okay all right Perfect. so what you've had seafood you've been a good good friday catholic okay then we're moving on to sunday and we would traditionally probably have for us we would have pasta of course and mm -hmm. then we'd follow on with like a roast beef mm -hmm. as suggested mm -hmm. Um, so, what am I going to mix with that? What am I going to have with my pasta first? Lasagna, for sure. sure. Mine okay. is lasagna. Sure. So, if um, pasta is obviously really just a very simplistic oil based pasta or something with fresh back down here. But if you're going into things like Nonna's bolognese and lasagna and things like that, or into ragu, which is quite big and yeah. heavy, you've got to go the Bad other way. end. Yeah. So, into your red wines. Um, if you're doing lasagna and bolognese, you can get away with medium bodied red wines, but you can also go all the way to your heavy bodied reds as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if, again, if you're stacking to the lighter end of the food spectrum, go back to the lighter end of the wine spectrum. Okay. So fresh food, light wines, heavier, meaty, flavoursome Thai, or Thai food? Thai food? Mm, stick with this wine. Or oh, is that Vidello? These two wines. So Vidello and okay. our wild wine. If you're thinking of Thai and Vietnamese foods, they tend to be very aromatic and flavoursome mm -hmm. spices. They're not built, they're not generally spiced that, you know, smack yeah. you around. So these delicate aromatic wines suit quite well. If you have spicy food that's hot, spicy, sweet. So sweet. move into okay. the wild white or even if you want to go and grab a bottle of don't German say Riesling, it. I think then say no. <laughs> We're classier than that, it. Wendy. Don't say it. 
Okay. Maybe. And then what, was else, what else did John recommend for our Sunday lunch? It was snapper. Snapper? With chilli and... Um, yeah, with ginger. Ginger and, that sort and of chilli, yeah. So, quite aromatic ginger is. Uh, so that's where Vidello really plays a part. Now yeah. you can take those dishes a couple of different ways. If I was cooking, let's be honest, if Catherine was cooking that dish <laughs> at home, she'd probably lump in a whole lot of chilli. So if that's the case, then Rieslings, Vidello, Wild White, for example, work really well. But the Semillon would get knocked over by the spice. Okay. But if you don't like spiciness, maybe you like lots of sit. Of course it is. It's Hunter Valley. I know. It's such an underrated. Very variety. much is. All right. So we did Friday and Sunday. You don't eat on Saturday. Mm, leftovers. Leftovers. Fair what enough. are we going to do? I don't know. So we've got a couple of other wines in the middle. Uh, uh, Chardonnay, really versatile varietal. If you're doing creamy pastas, uh, chicken dishes, if you want to go into tomato-based pastas, mm -hmm. this is where the action is Beautiful. with these styles. Um, guys, Danny's asked which is the best uh, wine served with a grazing platter? Grazing platter? Everything, <laughs> because you graze on everything. I guess that really depends on what's on your platter, because grazing platters can be everything from just a little bit of meat and cheese all the way through to anything and everything. And so sure. let's say salami, prosciutto, um, mm -hmm. some cream cheeses, cream blue cheese. Sure, so you've what got a got? real mixed bag of flavours. That's probably where rosé and things like that come mm, into play. Because rosé is really refreshing and it'll help cut through all the different flavours. So it's got enough grunt to go with things like prosciuttos or um, hams and those sorts of things, but is delicate enough to go with, say, hummus and capsicum dips and those Yum. sorts of things. Okay. All right. And anything else? Beef. Beef? Beef. Oh, roast yeah, the beef. roast beef. Our sure. roast beef that <laughs> sure. we've got in our recipes. So roast beef is a pretty full-flavoured, rich style of protein. Definitely the action is with our bluegrass wines. These are the hero-style wines for those dishes. But it really does depend on what you're a fan of. So if you're more of a medium-bodied, uh, wine fan and things like Pinot Shiraz or Pinot can work quite well because they're fruit driven. The good thing about Pinot Shiraz is the Shiraz will give you the spice as in the pepper character in the wine um, which will match quite well with beef uh, but if you really like traditional Saddler's Creek wines then Bluegrass Cab or Cab Shiraz is where it is. Bluegrass is the winner. Osmari says the 2003 Bluegrass Cabernet is the winner. Um, what about dessert? What's for dessert? Um, how about cheesecake. a pavlova cheesecake? Cheesecake. Um, so wine goes pretty well. Okay. Chocolate, um, chocolate brownies. Chocolate brownies. Style wines, those styles of dessert, uh, wines, dessert wines go really well because they're quite sweet. They've got a lot of sugar, like 150, 160 grams a litre uh, worth of sugar. It's more than Coca-Cola, for example. But it suits really well to those desserts at the end of the meal where you're probably a bit worn out mm. from so many uh, dishes. Um, alternatively, you can start again. Just go back to the semi-on and replay. And start again. <laughs> so <laughs> why do. not? <laughs> Worth a shot. And we're bunkering down. Cool. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> Let's do it. Cheers, hey guys. guys. Cheers. Cheers oh, to don't Friday. forget, I want to see everyone's table settings. Yes. I want to see photos. Send yes. Them to us. Some styling tips from Cafe. So yeah, the styling tips, out. the recipes from John. This is a family business. We love it. And before, <laughs> before you uh, hit that button, Deb, yes, just one really important thing to every single one of you, Club Equus members, friends of Saddlers, friends of friends, family of family, thank you very much for your support over yeah. the last couple of weeks. It's been a pretty interesting ride for everyone in the country uh, or in the world over the last three to four weeks, and it ain't over yet. Um, so for those of you who have wine already delivered or have wine on the way, thank you very much. Uh, for those of you who empty your cellar over Easter, we'll be here you on Tuesday morning. <laughs> so if you need to stock up. Anyway, keep smiling. Enjoy. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Cheers. Cheers.